بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يتلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدع ضلالة وكل ضلالة في نار My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome for, to all mu- non Muslims today. I hope you can understand me good, it's loud enough. Also, in the, wo- in the stage of the woman, at the stage of the woman, it's also loud enough. You can understand me, okay? But because this is always the, say- the first question, because sometimes I'm giving a lecture and after 30 minutes I hear, yeah, the women are not understanding anything. So I have to begin from, <laughs> from the begin- one more time from the beginning. The topic of today, yes, I saw today in the, in, the, in the newspaper, my journey, boxing champion tells us of his amazing journey to peace. It was nice that our Sheikh mentioned some points, or stressing some points. Maybe I will also talk about this point, because I was more prepared to talk about the arguments that led me towards Islam, you know, but we will stress this point also, inshallah. And I was wondering because when you hear boxing champion, you know, maybe the mo- maybe most people think, yeah, this guy maybe accept Islam because he got too much punches to his head, you know. <laughs> so of course he accepted Islam. <laughs> So I don't know if this, if this you know, even, even in Germany, you know, we sometimes don't know, is this advertisement so good, you know. When I accepted Islam, you know, uh, also the, the journalists came to me and they asked me, why did you accept Islam? And also Muhammad Ali accepted Islam and some boxers like Mike Tyson accepted Islam. Is there any connection between accepting Islam and be, being a boxer? Yes, you know I say to them, I did not accept Islam because Muhammad Ali accepted Islam and he's my role model in sports or in boxing, but because I'm convinced that this is the true way to God, the, the ultimate way to salvation. That's the reason. And why accepted so many boxers Islam? I mean, there are a lot of sportsmen, a lot of F- uh, famous sportlers who accepted Islam. Maybe there's one reason, and this reason is that sport is like, like a mirror of life. You know, you are a sportler, you want to be the best. You know, the purpose of your life is you want best, you want fame. And then you realize, you know, it's like you know, you want that the people know you, that you are successful and everything. And finally you realize, in a short period, that this is all nothing. Worthy nothing. Why? Because it looked like some to be the people, you know, they were very famous and after a short period nobody knows them anymore. And they know, look, today you know, it's like, for me, for example, okay, I quitted the sport and I was in a quite young age, 22, 23 years old. So I had everything in front of me, but I saw other people. You know, it's the time you are young, you're a young guy, and all the people are saying, oh, this, he's a talented boxer, or he's a talented football, soccer player, or he has talent for this. You know, you're young. Then two, three years later, Finally, you're not young anymore. You're senior now. It's, it's only a short period. It's like life. Can you remember when you were, for example, 15 years old? You know, this was yesterday. Now you're 30. I'm 31 now. You know, when I was 15 years, 15 years I was yesterday. It's very fast. And in sports, it's even faster. 
so you begin to think then you are finally you know for, for example a good friend of mine he was always he was one of my best friends his name is Felix Storm if you go to the internet Felix Storm he is the middleweight world champion now by the way he is also Muslim from Germany he is a middleweight world champion he was you know when we were young people I have a video when I was with him he was maybe 13 and I'm 40 and we looked like little children we were together in the together boxing you know we were boxing together you know now after a short period he is now also 30 years old he's not young anymore and this and, and you say oh look look how fast it goes and who thinks about this about the life about our life how fast you become old how fast you your death comes he thinks about it because in, in sports when you retire it's like you died and so I think that a lot of sportsmen who uh, saw this fame and everything they think about life and maybe this is the reason why they become later on Muslims and uh, discover this religion this is maybe a reason I was asked and this is also one reason for me you know there are a lot of reasons I will illustrate this inshallah you know but first of all I want to mention something I mentioned very often at the beginning of the lecture this lecture is first of all for or not first of all but it's for Muslims that we benefit that we learn some arguments because I have to mention that we as Muslims that we as Muslims have an obligation and this obligation is to deliver this message because we love for every human being the best and I ask you what is the best for us Muslims Islam this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah, in Surah 5 chapter 5 verse, verse 3 he says اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا and the meaning of this word is that the Islam is the biggest ni'mah, the biggest favor what Allah gave you. Why? Because we believe that, the, that Islam is the key to paradise. And we as Muslims, we have to be people who love for other people the best. Like the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, he loved for every human being the best. He was not interested in getting money, in getting rulership or something like this. No. He was interested in the rescue the people from hellfire. So even he went to a young Jewish chap, you know, he went to his bed when he was dying. And he called him to Islam. Because he wanted to rescue his soul. So he went to him. And, and we have to have the same attitude. And maybe we can learn some arguments, even for the Muslims. Some Muslims, they don't really know why. They don't really realize what ni'mah, what favor is Islam to them. And so maybe I can help you a bit to give you some arguments and to realize what favor Islam is upon us. The second group is are non-Muslims. I hope said I can remember some non-Muslims who are here unfortunately we are not too much non-Muslims but maybe I can remember them about the shortness of life and how important it is to look for the true way and maybe I give them some arguments that are convincing them I hope but I give every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, I give him one advice. Because I cannot lead anybody to the way. None, nobody. Only Allah, the Almighty God, can show you the true way. We are only asbab, we are only reasons that Allah creates. So I give every human being the advice to raise his hands to the heaven and say 
Like the prophet We are not too much non-Muslims. But maybe I can remember them about the shortness of life and how important it is to look for the true way. And maybe I give them some arguments that are convincing them, I hope. But I give every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, I give him one advice. Because I cannot lead anybody to the way. Man, nobody. Only Allah, the Almighty God, can show you the true way. We are only asbab, we are only reasons that Allah creates. So, I give every human being the advice to raise his hands to the heaven and say, like the Prophet teached us, Allahumma arini al haqqa haqqa that means show me the truth as truth and help me to follow it and show me the wrong way as the wrong way and help me to abstain from it this is the way what, this is the advice I give everybody when he goes home non-Muslims and also the Muslims because in Islam we have also to follow the right Islam because there are some people who understand the Islam wrong but this is another topic now to my story I was a Protestant and my family was not really a practicing uh, a religious Christian family but my mother for example sometimes my mother she uh, reminds me about some facts she said that I, or, or she says that I was always interest, very interested in religion. And my notes were always very good in religion in school because I have always this inclination towards religion. I wanted to know about religion. And later on I went to a very, very good school, a Christian school. This Christian school was actually uh, built up by some monks by some monks and later on it was a school only for boys when I was there only for boys no ikhtilat because it was um, as I told you it was built up by monks so they were really concentrating also to teach us some of these Christian beliefs and also Christian values and I have to say right now I really benefited from this. Why? Because a lot of values, or most values we have in Christianity, the, the, uh, that, uh, that, that you find in Christianity, they are not, they, they are standing not in contradiction to the values in Islam. But we believe that all this religion came actually at the beginning from the same Almighty God, but that in Christianity, in Judaism, there were some things changed. But you even now, you find a lot of things benefiting. And in, from our perspective, from our Muslim perspective, right. You still find it. But of course, there are crucial issues, crucial differences, the main differences, that let us say to everybody, and we don't want to insult or hurt anybody, you have to follow Islam. For example, Trinity, Atonement, Theory, Inherited Sin and these things. But I will come later on to these topics, inshallah. But what I, want to, what, what I want to mention is, I really benefited from this. So, later on, I went when I was 13 or 14 years old to like um, special lessons to church. For, it's for confirmation, tafbid in Arabic. And in this durus, as I told you, I was always very interested. I was always thinking about these verses in the Bible. And I had a discussion with the priest there. It was a priest or a minister, I don't remember anymore. Uh, but he was someone who studied, his, uh, studied Christianity. And I found there something what seemed to me contradicting what seemed to me contradicting and I asked him about this and he said to me yeah there are contradictions in the Bible and a lot of priests, a lot of ministers in the world